In this video, we will show you how to assemble and control WaveGo. First, assemble the servo units. Note that the left and right parts in the picture are different. Insert the arm into the groove. Before installing the arm to the gear of the servo, you need to control the servo to rotate to the specified position. In order to protect the circuit, you need to press the boot button to power on for the first time after installing the batteries. After powering on, use the DuPont cable to connect the G12 to the 3.3 volts of the multifunction expansion interface, and the servo will rotate to the specified position after connecting the wire. Connect a servo to any servo port. The color of the servo wire may be different due to different batches of servos. Connect the servo to the board according to the color of the wire. Install the arm to the gear of the servo according to the marked angle. Take an M2 by 5 screw to fix the arm and the servo together. Take 4 M2 by 5 screws to assemble the other two servos. The servo wire needs to pass through the upper part of the unit, like this. After the screw is tightened, do not tighten it more, otherwise the thread form during the screwing process will be damaged. In this way, we assemble one servo unit, and then assemble the other in the same way. Then we will assemble the remaining two servo units. The assembly methods are similar, except that these two servo units are the mirror version of the two previously assembled. Connect a servo to any servo port. Install the arm to the gear of the servo according to the marked angle. Take an M2 by 5 screw to fix the arm and the servo together. Take four M2 by 5 screws to assemble the other two servos. In this way, we assemble one servo unit, and then assemble the other in the same way. Now, all four servo units are assembled. Next, assemble the leg links, which are also the same in pairs. First install the flange bearing. Note that the installation directions of the two bearings are opposite. If the bearing cannot be inserted, you can press it hard. The leg structure is made of nylon, which has a relatively high toughness. The two flange bearings on the small linkage are in the same direction. Each joint of the leg consists of two flange bearings and one flat bearing. Flange bearings are used to share the radial force of the joints. This is the case after the flange bearing is installed. Install one flange bearing on this part. Two of these components are required for one leg. Be careful not to lose parts when unpacking the flat bearing. Insert a KM3 by 16 screw into the flange bearing, so that the parts of flat bearing is not easy to fall off. Finally, use the M3 lock nut to fix this joint. Be careful not to tighten the lock nut too tight, otherwise it will hinder the joint rotation. The same is true for other joints, insert a long screw into the flange bearing and then install other components. When installing the M3 lock nut, you can first use a cross wrench and a screwdriver to tighten the lock nut, and then loosen it appropriately so that the joint can rotate without shaking too much. After assembly, all joints can rotate smoothly, and you need to pay attention to the tightness of the joints from time to time during future use. Assemble another set of leg links in the same way. The assembly method of the next two groups of leg links is similar to the previous two groups. First install the flange bearing. Install one flange bearing on this part. This is the case after the flange bearing is installed. Two of these components are required for one leg. The same is true for other joints, insert a long screw into the flange bearing and then install other components. When installing the M3 lock nut, you can first use a cross wrench and a screwdriver to tighten the lock nut, and then loosen it appropriately so that the joint can rotate without shaking too much. After assembly, all joints can rotate smoothly, and you need to pay attention to the tightness of the joints from time to time during future use. Assemble another set of leg links in the same way. In this way, the four sets of leg links are assembled. Next. Assemble the body and use KM 25 by 6 screws to fix the nylon column to the drive board on the side of the batteries. Remove the sticker on the buzzer. Place the servo units as shown in the frame. Connect the servo shown in the frame to the drive board. The wiring of the servo is regular, and the farthest servo is connected to the port closest to the edge. The corresponding number is also marked next to the servo port, so you can wire according to the number.
Lift the black plastic sheet behind the camera connector, install the camera, and then press down the black plastic sheet to fix the camera. Use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to fix the bottom cover on the nylon column. The wiring of the servos needs to pass through the gap between the nylon column and the battery's box. To install an external antenna base, the wire needs to go through the hole under the base. After connecting the antenna base and the OLED screen cable, install the top panel and side panels. Use M2 by 8 nylon screws and M2 nylon nuts to fix the servo units to the side panel. After all the servo units are installed, fix the side panels and the cover plates together. Arrange the servo wires to avoid obstructing the joint swing. The assembled look is shown in the frame. Install flange bearing. Then install the head and press the round protrusions on the head into the flange bearing. Use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to fix the head to the body. Then install the tail in the same way. Install flange bearing. When installing the tail, you need to first pass the switch through the hole on the tail, and then press the round protrusions on the tail into the flange bearing. To install the OLED screen, you need to insert as many wires as possible into the cover plate, so that it is easier to install the OLED screen. There are two installation methods. One is convenient for disassembly, but the screw heads will be exposed. The second method will not expose the screw heads, using 3M double-sided tape to fix the acrylic cover, which may be troublesome for disassembly. At this time, the body has been fully assembled, and the servos needs to be corrected before installing the leg links. After powering on, use the DuPont cable to connect the G12 to the 3.3 volts of the multifunction expansion interface. After the device enters the assembly mode, install the arms according to the angle shown in the frame. Unplug the DuPont cable and restart the device. The device will automatically establish a hotspot, Wi-Fi name, WaveShare robot, Wi-Fi password, 12345678900. After the phone is connected to the hotspot, the Wi-Fi may be disconnected due to the ping failure to connect to other known Wi-Fis. Reconnect once to solve the problem. It is recommended to use the Chrome browser to access 192.168.4.1. It is possible to run with other browsers, but there may be compatibility issues. Each servo channel has three corresponding buttons to control, PWM+, PWM and set. Continuously press the PWM plus or PWM button to adjust the angle of the corresponding servo to the specified position as shown in the figure. This position must be as accurate as possible. After the adjustment is accurate, press the set button to save this position. Each steering gear needs to be rectified before the first use. If the calibration is okay, this process only needs to be done once. The location will be permanently saved, even if you re-upload a new program, it will not be affected. After all the servos are rectified, turn off the switch. After turning off the switch, you can freely rotate the steering gear arm to facilitate the installation of the leg linkage. But be careful not to lose the servo arms. Install the leg connecting rod as shown in the figure. Be careful not to install it in the wrong direction. Use M2 by 5 screws to fix the leg connecting rod and the steering gear together. Place the robot on a horizontal surface. After turning on the switch, the robot will stand up after a while. 
the device will automatically establish a hotspot, Wi-Fi name, WaveShare robot, Wi-Fi password, 12345678901. It is recommended to use the Chrome browser to access 192.168.4.1. After pressing the start button, the camera will be turned on. If the screen ratio is abnormal, you can refresh the page. For more information about WaveGo, please refer to our API documentation and WaveGo secondary development tutorial.